one. One. You will hear three conversations: the first and the third between two students, and the second between a student and a clerk. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hi, it's Mike, isn't it? Yes, and you're Phoebe. Phoebe, right? Where are you headed? I'm looking for the main hall. So am I. Are you going there to register for next year? Yes, I was told to go to administrations and fill in an application form. That's what I'm about to do. I went to information, and they told me it was at the end of this corridor. Then we have to turn left and immediately right. That should lead us to the exit, where opposite we should find the entrance to ground level main hall. It's a big old red building. From there, we need to go to the first level. And then follow the signs. Apparently, it's the second office opposite the foyer. It would be pretty hard to miss. That sounds easy. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Well, since we're both heading in that direction, let's go together. Hopefully, it won't take too long. I haven't had anything to eat, and I'm starving. Me too. Well, how about I go to the canteen and get us something while you make your way to the main hall? I'm sure there's going to be quite a wait. There always is. I can meet you there. Sounds like a good plan. What do you want me to get you? Um, how about a chicken and salad roll and a drink? Okay. What if they don't have a chicken and salad roll? Anything similar like ham and salad, or just plain salad and cheese. Oh, and don't forget the drink. I feel so dehydrated. No problem. What type of drink? I don't know.、Um, How about a coke? No, nothing like that. Something healthier. An orange juice? They're usually full of sugar unless you get it freshly squeezed. Water? Yes, that's perfect. Here, take two pounds. That should cover it. If it's more, I'll give it to you when you get back. I only have a twenty, and you know that they get cranky if you give them large notes. Okay. See you in five minutes. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. First year economics. I just have to fill out this form for our records. What's your name? Phoebe Payne. Can you spell that for me? Sure. P H O E B E P A Y N E. Your address? Six. Wainwright Avenue. That's W A I N R I G H T, Nottingham. Nottingham. And your phone number? It's not connected yet. I've just moved in. Okay. When you get your phone connected, contact us. I'll just make a note that your phone number is to be advised. I'll do that. What course were you doing? Law? No, economics. First year. First year economics. Yes, that's right. Okay, take this card across to the economics department and get it stamped, and then you need to come back here to pay your fees. I've made an arrangement to pay in installments. Do you have any documentation verifying that? Yes, I have a statement from administration. Okay, when you return, we'll have a look at it. Thank you very much. Here you are. It was quicker than I thought, 
but I have to get this card stamped and return here to organise my fees. That's good. It means that I won't have to wait long either. How did you get on? What with? Oh, the food. Well, there wasn't much left, so I got you a cheese and tomato sandwich and water. That's fine. Do I owe you any more? No, I need to give you back three pounds. But I only gave you two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you gave me a fiver. OK, so we're square. So what do I have to do? Go to the desk and give your personal details. Then they'll give you a card that you need to take to your faculty. What's your major? Environmental science. OK, so you'll have to take the card to the environmental science faculty and get the card stamped, return to administration in the main hall and organise your fees. And that's it? Yes, that means you're registered. Then we receive a letter with the details of our course where we'll be informed to go to the notice board or online to find out when and where our lectures are. OK. Let's have this bite to eat first. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. Two. You are going to hear a talk given by an international student. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. As an international student coming from Sierra Leone, it gives me great honor to give these opening remarks and welcome you all to Ashisi University, where excellence is the code. I believe I speak on behalf of my fellow colleagues when I say we feel that we are the most fortunate and privileged university students in Ghana. You may ask, what is the basis of such a conclusion? And I will simply say to you, in which other tertiary institution in Ghana do you find the same level of IT infrastructure and facilities available to students? Where also do you find such a low ratio of students to lecturers and computers? In which other educational institution do you find 55% of students on some sort of financial aid who in addition enjoy services and benefits such as job placement after graduation, on-campus employment that pays above the minimum wage, a supply of textbooks, and access to online databases. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other institution of higher education in Ghana today that matches the learning environment and the quality of instruction at Ashisi. I could continue listing reasons why we students feel this way, but I only have five minutes for this speech. Believe me, I could go on for hours. At Ashisi, everyone is considered a leader and is treated special. Ashisi equips us with the necessary determination, strength, and belief in ourselves to be able to achieve our goals. We are being taught to think outside the box and to question and challenge our assumptions about the world we live in. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the benefits of a liberal arts education, which seeks to broaden our intellectual capacity. Now look at questions 17 to 20.
As the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. At Ashisi, we are also exposed to real-life situations and learn how to deal with them through a practical and vigorous academic program, as well as various seminars in which prominent leaders in their professions are invited as guests to interact and share their knowledge and experiences. Some people, even some of you in this audience, may believe that tuition at Ashisi is too high, but I say to you that the students here are unanimous in saying it is worth it. Not because we all come from well-to-do families, but because when it comes to one's education, you need to aim at getting the best from the right place. One's education defines who you are and what your perception of life and society will become. Ashisi offers us a top-quality education which meets high international standards. This is due to the strong linkages the school has established with three of the very best schools in the United States, namely Swarthmore College, which is ranked as the best liberal arts school in the U.S., UC Berkeley, and the University of Washington. In addition, Ashisi has recruited an excellent faculty consisting of lecturers from various countries, including Ghana, the U.K., and the United States. These lecturers are among the best in their respective academic fields. I believe this is the school's greatest asset, a strong and knowledgeable team dedicated to achieving successful results from their students and who also love their job. I would like to end with a personal message. My fellow students, because we are among the most privileged in our society, we should take responsibility for our own destinies, make our parents proud, and create a legacy for those that follow us and Africa as a whole. We must give back to our society after completing school and achieving our goals in life, which I believe we all can if we properly utilize our time and take advantage of all that is offered here at Ashisi. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a discussion between two students and their teacher on a planned charity event. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. So, are you making any progress with your plans for our annual charity event? I guess first things first, have you decided what charity it will be in aid of this year? We're thinking about Help the Children Africa, sir. Well, that's Mark's idea, sir, but I myself prefer a local charity called The Meals on Wheels. I'd have to agree with Laura on this one, Mark. After all, we're supposed to be giving back to the local community, and although helping African children is a very worthy cause, it's a little outside our remit. That settles it, I guess. Moving on from the beneficiary question, have you made a decision on what type of event it will be? Yes, we plan on doing something a little different this year. We're calling the event Balloonathon. Basically, we're going to offer balloons for sale to all the students. Balloons? I don't see where you're going with this. Why would they want to buy a balloon? Well, here's the thing. We don't actually give them the balloon. Instead, we'll write their name on it along with the special phone number and then we'll release all the balloons into the air. When they fall to the ground, if a person finds one and rings a special number, then both he and the student who bought the balloon will win a gift voucher. That sounds like an excellent idea, guys. Well thought out. 
This balloonathon has a real novelty value attached to it, don't you think? Exactly what we said, sir. The only drawback is that the gas you put into the balloons is rather expensive. How much? About twenty pounds per canister, and we'll need about ten. And how many balloons are you planning to blow up? Well, there are over a thousand students in the school, so if even one third of the students buy one, we'd need about three hundred and fifty balloons. We've decided to order five hundred so we don't run out. The good thing is we can return the canisters of gas if we don't use them, and the balloons aren't expensive, so there's no real risk of us spending a lot of money without getting a good return. You two have really thought this one out. I'm impressed. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Thank you, sir. So, how much money do you think we can raise? Well, each balloon costs about one p, and when it's filled with gas, it's going to cost us about fifty pence. We reckon that if we sell our balloons at a price of one pound fifty, and we sell all five hundred of them, we'll end up making a profit of one pound per balloon. So that's five hundred pounds in total. That's fantastic, and it gets better, sir. We've secured a sponsor for our event, who's going to give us a thousand pounds. How did you find a sponsor? The balloon company we approached about buying the balloons asked us if we'd be interested in letting them sponsor us too. What's in it for them? They're going to print their logo on every balloon. I think you've done a good deal there. Thank you, sir. So, do we have your approval to confirm our order? Absolutely. But you know, I think we can sell more balloons if we set our minds to it. So why not order double the amount, a thousand instead of five hundred? We're going to need more than ten canisters of gas then. Double the amount, presumably. Correct. Okay. Let's go for it. Let's make this year's charity event our most successful. Ever. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecturer giving a talk on a type of fundraising for business called crowdfunding. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Good morning, everyone. Today we're continuing our look at funding opportunities for small startup businesses. The emergence of social media has given companies the ability to connect with fans and potential customers directly. On the back of the growth in social media. 
A model of raising finance has emerged known as crowdfunding. This revolutionary way of raising finance began with micro-lending in the 90s. More recently, an equity-based model has emerged that allows people to invest directly in a new company. We're going to examine this in more detail later, but let's turn first to a third model, which I'll term a fan-based model. With this model of crowdfunding, individuals are encouraged to give an amount of money to support the launch of a project or initiative without the promise of any financial return. Instead, there's a reward for donating. This contrasts with the micro-lending model, which would require a return on investment, and the equity-based scheme, which may offer shares. Crowdfunding portals, or websites, allow the business concerned to present the initiative along with the financial target required. There's a fixed time limit for fundraising, and if the target amount is reached, all donations are paid to the company or individual. Whether it's an author planning to write a new book, an independent film company looking to make a new film, or a technology company with an idea for an app, the person or company needing funding would turn to its fan base for support. This is managed through one of the many crowdfunding online portals that have emerged. Of course, a fan or supporter of a particular initiative is likely to give money anyway. But donation-based crowdfunding will often make donating even more attractive by offering a rewards-based incentive scheme. Let's take a film company, for example, that needs funding for a new film. For a small, set donation, the donor might be offered a free ticket to the premiere or a DVD of the film. A larger set donation might be rewarded by the chance to attend a launch event when the film goes live. Those people who make bigger donations could even be offered the chance to meet the cast of the film, whilst the highest level donation could see the person's name mentioned in the film credits. For companies that already have a significant fan base, crowdfunding offers a fantastic opportunity to raise money quickly from a large number of people, each of whom donates just a small amount of money. Compare this to the time and effort that would be needed to sell your idea to investors or your bank manager, particularly in an age when raising finance can be difficult. The company may also have links with partner companies, or organizations that run fundraising events. In this case, you can significantly increase participation by working with these organizations to promote your crowdfunding project. Another significant advantage is that you can reach out to your fan base for feedback on the project while it's being developed, thus making the final product more appealing. Crowdfunding enables you to raise awareness of the product at an early stage thus increasing the potential for sales. With so many people behind you, it can also act as a great incentive to get the best possible product out on time and on budget. However, there are disadvantages to bear in mind. The model can be described as all or nothing. If you don't reach the monetary target required in the agreed time, all promises of donations are cancelled and no money is paid, leaving you back at square one. Should this happen, or still worse, you receive the funding but are unable to come up with the product, not only will your fans end up disappointed, but the portal will record the fact that you failed to reach your target, or that the initiative failed. Fulfilling all the pledges that you've made to people can also be very time-consuming. For example, remembering to send out copies of books or free cinema tickets can sometimes be forgotten in the excitement and frenzy of launching your product. People sometimes forget to factor in the cost of rewards when calculating profit margins. But these can be significant. And finally, if you have a small fan base, for example, you're a new company or have a small social media footprint, raising awareness of your initiative will be challenging. These drawbacks aside, donation-based crowdfunding is a wonderful opportunity for individuals or small startups to raise funds for that exciting new project whilst reaching out and connecting to the people who are most likely to support and promote your work for you. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute 
to check your answers.